beautiful event. I actually bumped into my dance teachers. Um, I haven't seen them in 20 years, Cookie and John. They're the reason why I had the strength and courage to become a Pussycat doll. And Robin, well, she took the reins and, well, she changed my life forever. Um, it was truly such an honor to be asked to present the Dance Icon Award to such a strong, beautiful, innovative, and fearless visionary who happens to be one of my dearest friends. Not only is she incredibly talented, but she is also deeply loved and respected by her friends and family, the Antons, who have unparalleled support for one another, especially for their, from their beautiful mother, Brenda, who is looking down proudly from heaven today and every day. From dancer to choreographer and directing to producing to owning one of the coolest dance studios on the planet, Playground, <laughs> yeah, there's no stopping her. She, to this very day and many years to come, has influenced our pop culture with her vision and captivated audience worldwide, all while embodying her very famous motto, inside everyone is a pussycat doll. <laughs> Let's take a look at her iconic work. I'm supposed to be getting an icon award for. But anyway, you all know, I think, why I'm here. And this is something that I have been wanting for a long time. Um, but you know, there's so many amazing people that deserve this kind of award. Um, you know, just being called an icon to me is, is, is like, wow. I, Never. I just do what I do, and I love what I do, and I love to dance, and I dance every single day. <laughs> um, inspiring women and men and all genders all around the world to be who they are and do what they love and dance, no matter if you're a lawyer, a doctor, a nurse, whatever you are, just, you know, bring it all back to dance. Um, and... Um, as Kim, As Kim Hale, Hale says, says, I introduced, I introduced her, her to, to heels. heels. <laughs> <laughs> right, Kim? So, um, yeah, so it, it works. Dancing, dancing works for your mind, your body, and your soul. Um, I lost my mom last year, and, and it definitely took a major toll on my family and, and was, um, you know, uh, something that we, we all had to come together and, and deal with and really support each other in it, and dance really has gotten me through it and gotten me, it's been, I just say dance therapy, no matter what. So everyone, I hope I get to see you in, wherever, wherever you wanna go, but Playground LA is the shit. <laughs> so anyway, I wanna say thank you so much to the Dance Industry Awards for honoring me with this incredibly special award, and to all of my, my friends, my family who are sitting right here to, that support me every single day through my life. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much. So here is my story, as short as I could possibly make it. I promise you, Jackie Slight, who produced this, I promise you it will be over three and a half minutes, but hopefully only four minutes, so buckle up, okay? I'm just, I just want to tell you my story. Okay, so I started dancing at the age of nine. Um, I was, I was uh, always very inspired by musicals, fashion, great music of all genres, thanks to my brother, Stephen, um, who is not here tonight, he's working, and, and my mom, who is not with us. Mom, I love you. Um, 
and my whole family, my dad is here, and my, my brother Neil is here. Um, but everyone, uh, you know, has, has inspired me. They've all inspired me so much and taught me pretty much everything I know today. The only thing that they did, were not able to teach me is how to dance. I had to figure that out on my own. Um, so I had the support, you know, from everyone. And, uh, you know, I was... Never, they, none of them really ever questioned why I was always in dance class. Like, what are you doing? You're just always in dance class. It's like, that's all you want to do is dance. What are you going to do with it? You know, when I got to that age where it was sort of like, what are you going to be? You know, who knew? But they knew that I loved it so much, and I think that that was just enough for them. You know, it wasn't, I mean, trust me, they're a very, I have a very opinionated family. Um, <laughs> who is always like, what are you doing? Where are you going? Who are you with? What are you wearing? What are you, what's your hair like? All that stuff. Anyway, um, so it's all, it all comes from a very caring place of love um, and just, you know, always hoping that I would turn whatever I'm doing into something that makes me happy. Cut to, um, I started a show from all of my inspirations that was live on stage for people to come to see uh, that... Uh, I could, could see me dance, that I could put myself in, my friends in, and make, I made the costumes, side note, I learned how to sew from a very young age, so I made all the costumes, sewed everything by hand, my grandfather taught me how to sew, and, and I just put my skills to work, and that was that. Around that time, I had met Christina Applegate, um, and yeah, that was around in 1995, and I met her in a dance class who knew that she was such an amazing dancer, and so talented, and I just was like, you know, do you want to do this crazy little show that I'm thinking about? We ended up becoming roommates. To this day, we call each other roommate, roomie, um, and we love each other, and I think about her every day. Um, she had a little dance studio in her garage, and I would just go down there and create dance numbers and, and you know, just kind of was, like, inspired by everything from Sweet Charity to... Um, all of the, you know, a lot of Bob Fosse films, um, and it was something a lot of that a lot of us are very inspired by, and dancers like Sid Therese and Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, and a lot of sort of those pioneers of dance that really helped create kind of what I wanted to do. Um, and Christina loved what I was doing, and and said, you know, I have this friend named Johnny Depp. I'm like, who? And he owns the Viper Room, and I think he would love what you're doing. And, and I, I was like, do you want to be in it? And she was the first of many celebrities that ended up, I ended up putting in the show and paved the way to, uh, you know, what the Pussycat Dolls became. Um, and Johnny loved it. We auditioned for him. We just did one number. The next week, we were up on stage, and night after night, selling out, Carmen Electra came in. She was on board, and eight years later, we were still performing at the Viper Room. Throughout the years, we had we had tons of celebrities, uh, you know, hearing about this wild show down at the Viper Room. They had to see for themselves. Um, I'll always remember Carmi Bakar, who a lot of you know, amazing dancer, um, telling me she was going to bring Gwen Stefani to the show, and I'm like, what? You're bringing Gwen Stefani to the show? And here I am uh, up on stage, and here she is, like literally right here, and I'm like, oh my God, this is so crazy, like. We're, okay, so we're dancing, the curtain starts closing, I jump off the stage, and I'm like, Gwen, do you want to be a part of the show? She's like, I could never do this in a million years. This is, like, too scary for me. This is something that I wouldn't, I'm, I'm too nervous. And I'm like, you're Gwen fucking Stefani. Like, what are you talking about? You're an icon. You're, like, the greatest, like, rock star in the world. And she was, you know, it was crazy. And the next thing you know, she was up on stage dancing with us. And, you know, shook us all. She was so amazing. Um, and she really did. She was, you know, also one of the first. And everyone from Christina Aguilera to Pink to Fergie to Kim Kardashian, Charlize Theron, Scarlett Johansson, Pamela Anderson, Paris Hilton. And the list goes on and on and on. Who graced the stage with us and helped us pave the way to really what was to become something huge. In the meantime... There we were, working dancers in the business, you know, trying to make a living and, and, and doing what we were doing um, and, and, you know, doing everything in the show, all of the girls helping me put this small little show together on, at, the, on the, at the Viper Room stage, hanging the curtain, putting rhinestones on the curtain, putting rhinestones on, on all the costumes that I made. And, you know, 
the list goes on. I, I could not, literally could not have done it without those girls. Jessica Sutta, all of the the, 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 the the recording group girls and all of the girls before that and before that, before that. There were many incarnations before that, um, which ended up becoming the recording group, the Pussycat Dolls. Um, and I had learned, thank you, <laughs> I know. It's really a special thing that it, it turned into what it did because of something that I didn't, you know, I think as dancers, we all know that we just do what we love and we don't think about like, this is what I'm going to do. Like, like from when you start dancing, you just, you just do it, you just dance. And then it becomes, that's why I say, you know, you never know what it's gonna become. It could become something that's just like bigger than you ever imagined. And that's really what happened for me. And I, 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 I did learn that, you know, choreography was obviously, you know, a huge passion of mine um, beyond the live show. And I was lucky enough to land some really epic jobs. Like a lot of the stuff that you didn't see up there, like like the Friends routine and stuff like that, and, and Charlie's Angels, and and the and you know when Jimmy Fallon. Um, uh, was the host on the Emmys and had all the uh, comedians on there and I did, you know, things on the Academy Awards and I did a lot of great things, so I think that that's kind of why I'm here, not just because of the Pussycat Dolls, I think that someone finally, like, thank you, Jackie, is it you? Someone recognized it, they're like, they're like maybe Robin should get this Icon Award. Um, <laughs> but I'm really grateful for that. Um, and, you know, I was always one of those choreographers, too, that was kind of called on for, like, the comedy or the sexy. You know, like, I got this, I had this cover of this magazine that was, like, the queen of sexy. I'm like, maybe that is me, because when I choreographed Paris Hilton in the, in the, um, in the, uh, Carl's Jr. spot, that's hot. I had to say, like, five, six, seven, on eight, you lick, and then on, on five, six, seven, you bite. Right? right? And that, and that was, was the choreography. The um, and, um, and then, you know, I had to kind of mirror her on a car and crawl around and be all like super hot and wash, you know, cover myself in suds and do all this, that she just copied me. And I did a lot of that for a lot of celebrities that, that weren't dancers. Um, and Mikey Minden was my assistant for many years, um, who I had met, you know, when he was a child and went on to become who he is today, which is I'm so proud of, and and we're still partners in crime, which is amazing. Um, at that point, you know, we were still doing I was still doing the shows at the Viper Room. My brother Steve, who wrote and directed Burlesque the movie, um, was also writing dialogue for all the celebrity MCs at the club shows and shooting this beautiful footage. So we had met with a few record companies uh, and decided to um, land on a great opportunity and make a deal with Interscope Records and turn the live show into a recording group, The Pussycat Dolls. <laughs> and that was something that I never, I never, I didn't plan, you know, it just happened and it was, you know, Jimmy Iovine is someone that's um, a huge legend in my life that gave me the opportunity and believed in me so much and, and introduced me to so many people and, you know, the girls and everyone that really believed in this, in this weird show that I had, that had 30 girls in the show. At that point, I had to kind of take it down to a smaller amount of girls. But Jimmy believed in me so much. He was like, you know, you're the driving force of this. And this is something that, you know, you're, you're going to be an inspiration for so many girls, young girls and women and, and at that time, you know, he hadn't said men around the world, but now I'm going to say men around the world because, you know, it is about inspiring everyone and and being who you are and being and feel you know feeling empowered and teaching everyone about about you know what being empowered means and being who you are and not being afraid to be who you are. Um, I'm. You know, we went out there, we auditioned, we had to find new faces. We found Nicole and Melody, who, you know, are beautiful girls and, you know, amazing voices and, and, um, and found Jessica and Ashley and Carmine and Kim. Yes. So anyway, that's the Pussy Get Dolls. And I want to say thank you so much to everyone beautiful icon award and this is i just want to say one more thing i know that i'm supposed to get off
song, but this is for my mom, Brenda. Mom, I love you so much. Thank you.